from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, navels everywhere. Uh, what? It, how come navels only used like in navel gazing? I guess uh, no one says. Uh, How's your navel? Like, I guess yeah, you can't say, you wouldn't say that. Uh, but you, you, I've heard of fuzzle, fuzzy navel, which is a drink, navel gazing. Other than that, is it just, it's called belly button, right? Uh, there's probably an official term. Is navel the official term? Uh, is navel, the, am I using navel correctly? Because I, don't, I was going to say, this will be a fuzzy episode of navel gazing because we're going to be, this will be, these are the extra sleepy episodes where we talk about storytelling in the podcast and, and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at the season of Journey into the World of Friends, where it went, what I, a lot of unexpected uh, twists, not plot twists, meanders, uh, and maybe talk about what's coming up or the influences of what's coming up in our next series. If you're new, welcome to sleep. If you're a regular listener, you know, this is great because you could sleep through this. Uh, then you could listen to it during the day, dur- like and not as background noise, not pay attention to it, and then fall asleep to it again. And, you know, then if you wake up and you need and then you say it, and then on the fourth try, say, you know what, I need a little comfort in the deep, dark night. Um, you could listen to it yet again. And then years from now, you could listen to it. So that's the beauty of the show. If you're new, though, this is a podcast that's meant to take you, take you, to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep. It's a very different show, but you are welcome here. I'm so glad you're here. I really hope this podcast can help. But it is kind of a niche or whatever you, you want to say. I don't know how to put it. It's very different and probably different than what you're expecting. But I'd say give it a few tries. Like, uh, Lots and lots of people over the 10 years I've been making this show said, hey, it took two or three tries for me to realize, oh, the show is like, like fu- as fuzzy. It is like, a, like, a, yeah, it's a fuzzy show of an able, the, the, the kind of, yeah, you're right. You may be right. I don't know. Cause I fell asleep or kept me company and made me feel less alone in the deep, dark night. Those are the essential things I'm here to do. And for some reason, if you already loathe the show, uh, you say Fuzzy Navels, you know, you, I don't know. I mean, if you're a fan of Fuzzy Navels, that's great. I'm not saying anything bad about it. You say, like, I, like it, I mean, people do have strong feelings about navel gazing because you never hear, like, great job navel gazing there on, on those thousand podcasts you made. I'm not even sure what it means. Uh, luckily... I'm surprised I was never a, te- a teacher never said it to me. Like, why don't, can you quit your navel gazing? Because I guess in a sc- like talk about giggling, a giggling classroom. I'm sure there was times. I don't know if there ever was n- gazing at my ga- gazing or n- ga- gazing at my navel in class. Uh, but I was doing. I mean, I was doing a lot of gazing out the window, in you know, mo- like uh, that thousand yard stare. And uh, at my desk, uh, would, you know, I'd gaze at anything. Uh, but I was I don't think I, I've ever gazed at my navel in that way. As a matter of fact, you see, like most of the time, I mean, you say, well, I'm just doing a check. I'm just double checking. You know, th- that lint, you know, that lint collector in my laundry does not collect all lint. Uh, my navel's got a backup, you know, my navel's got, got your back. Uh, how about that? Uh, I mean, I do have to walk by my washer and dryer. But when you see a dryer, just say, don't worry, my navel's got your back, buddy. Uh, my navel has, you know, that one piece of lint that's going to get by. Did you know that this is supposed to be a, a, an efficient <laughs> start of a sleep podcast? So I'm glad you're here, I guess, is my point. Uh, oh, if you don't like the show, I went on a tangent when I was going to tell you, if you don't like the show, we have a website set up, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you with other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there. But do give the show a few tries. You really have nothing to to, to lose uh, because uh, the show is uh, ad-supported, so it's free to listen to and check out. So just kind of see how it goes, and uh, hopefully you'll become part of this uh, uh, family of uh, gazers uh, 
and daydreamers uh, who keep each other company in the deep dark night. So I'm really glad you're here. What we got coming up is uh, support. Most people enjoy listening to the show linearly to this ad-supported version, but I'll explain in the intro if you, you decide, huh, I'd prefer a different experience. There are ways to adjust the show for free. Uh, or, you know, become a premium member, get get access to different stuff. But for most people, they just let the show ease them into bedtime and then they fall asleep later on. So see how it goes at first. Uh, so so we got support coming up. That's how the, the show is free for everybody. Then there's a long meandering intro, which is separate from the support. And that's meant to ease you into bedtime uh, and help you drift off, kind of part of your bedtime routine. And then later on, it'll be a bedtime story, kind of looking at a couple of like our recent series. And those are usually really lulling because I'm trying to remember, hey, why did I make this creative choice? And you say, you like, and people are always like, you put a lot of thought into, uh, and I say, well, I do because it's important. But it's kind of th- thoughts you could sleep through, obviously, like the rest of this intro. So that's uh, uh, that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're here. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate coming by. And uh, these sponsors are how we're able to do this for free for you twice a week. All right, buddy, this is Scoots here. If you're new, you don't have to listen to this or worry about it. But if you're a regular listener, maybe you had the same experience I had when I tried to make the show, which was like, how come there's not something out there that sees how I'm feeling in the deep, dark night? And so I decided to make a sleep with me because I said, is anybody else feeling this loneliness, this inability to turn off, uh, that needs a distraction and a friend, that needs the podcast that puts you to sleep? And so I made sleep with me. And the reason we asked for support for the show whether it's supporting the sponsors or supporting the show directly on Sleep With Me Plus is because it's over 120 hours per week of work goes into the show right now. And in the past, I did as much of that as I could myself, and that was never sustainable, right? So if you do count on it, supporting it, just make sure it'll be there for you. So your action, kind of, you know, make sure Sleep With Me will be there for you, but a lot of other people too. Kind of cool bonus. And if you sign up for Sleep With Me Plus, you get everything organized in the way you want to listen. You get story-only episodes. At certain tiers, you get all intro episodes. You get all night, extra long compilations. You get bonus shows and exclusives that might not fit in this main feed and you get ad free uh, full episodes of course but you also get that peace of mind and that joy of participating in something I don't know you say wow I, 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 I'm glad this is in the world because I needed it so if any of that appeals to you uh, think about supporting the show at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus that's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus but thanks and those of you that are hearing this have supported the show in the past thanks a lot uh, because the show's here because of you and this isn't like, I know I know not everybody's in a position to support the show so i totally understand that too um and that's a great thing again for the people that do there's people that would love to support the show but they can't or there's people that would love to support the show but they're just kind of stuck or whatever so your support supports the show for them too so thank you so much all right everybody it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor helix sleep do yourself a favor, go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that Helix quiz. That was about four years ago that I took the Helix quiz, got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux, which is a perfect mattress for me and the way I sleep. Because the thing is, the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, the newly released Helix Elite collection. They have a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And how would you know which which one is going to fit you and your body? You just take that Helix sleep quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new mattress. And here's the thing. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has uh, several different mattress models to choose from. Each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. You know, if you're like me, I sleep on my stomach and my side. I sleep a hot, so I want to stay cool. And that's what happened. I took the quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And the way I know is every time I leave town, I cannot wait to get back. That first night back in my Helix Dusk Lux, it's like I'm in a state of sleep bliss. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but setup is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box, a straight 
straight to your door for free. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you here. It's where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Yeah, this part of the podcast a little bit higher energy uh, than the rest of the show because these are the people who keep the show free for everybody. I'm, I would love to be saying your name here. If you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it so I could thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. We haven't heard from anybody in a little while, but I wanted to thank some people who took the time time to support the show and to write up some testimonials about why they support the show on Sleep With Me Plus. And I want to thank Ramada. And Ramada said, you know, I feel so good knowing I'm reaching across the deep dark night to support others with this free resource that's available to anybody. And Ramada said, hey, if you could, if you can afford five, 10, 20 bucks a month, uh, try it out for a few months. Uh, so many people, this podcast helps. And that includes you, right, Ramada? Thank you. So if you want to be on the Sleep be supporters zone like Ramada, support the show. Fill out the form. If you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me. Fill out that form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thanks, Ramada. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Uh, if you're having a tough time, there's links to resources in our show notes, including international resources you could connect with right now. It's also about being a part of positive change with our actions, uh, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying all these things, but taking action, learning more. There's links to resources we could do that in the show notes. And you could join us. Uh, uh, the things we're supporting right now, Sleep With Me directly, me personally, is the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles. It's a shelter uh, that's there to help people experiencing homelessness. We're supporting the Trevor Project. Uh, you can support the Trevor Project uh, directly as well. And we're supporting Hand in Hand. You know, I first heard about Hand in Hand from RGB and I've been supporting it. And right now is an important time to support an organization looking to move forward. Hand in Hand is Israel's fastest growing integrated social movement. Their work reaches thousands of people every day, proving we can live together as Jews and Arabs, Israelis and Palestinians. And while there's a lot of different ways to support whatever's hurt in your heart right now, Hand in Hand is one of those. And that's the one we've been supporting. And you could learn more uh, about the Midnight Mission, Hand in Hand, or the Trevor Project and support any of those organizations or support whatever works for you. Uh, but you can see those links right in our show notes. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out in the show. Who are There's they? A posty poster song. Sounds like a near fall. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lich. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathanman.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. You get support your scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and a like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, uh, if you want a free way, you say, well, I, I love the ad supported show, Scoots, but I prefer something without the supporter zone or without that stuff. If you can't afford to support the show directly, you could sign up for our referral program for free, refer people to the free podcast and get access to ad free episodes and story only episodes. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash R E F E R. That's refer. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do 
is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether that's thoughts on your mind, thoughts about the past, present, the future, thoughts about me, thoughts about the weather. I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, they're always going. And it's, I mean, a lot of times I don't even notice. Like I talk about, it's been going on a lot recently, rehearsing for life, uh, rehearsing speeches, re rehearsing, like some part of my brain, and that's on autopilot. It's rehearsing ways to impress people of ways that only in practice, only in rehearsal does it go well. It says, well, what, what, we need more information about current events. And I say, well, which ones? Well, po you know, popular ones, pop culture ones. Uh, and I say, okay, because think about this one, and we'll lay it on people, our wisdom. But it doesn't usually, it doesn't, it's just doing that, like, in the background. I'm not, it's not actually engaging me. Whenever I engage it, it says, uh, I see, you realize, like, when I go to talk to somebody, it's like, it's like the definition of pratfall. Like a verbal, it could be a physical or verbal pratfall. And I'm just trying to, you know, keep practicing, you know, but uh, IRL. And my brain says, okay, then we're going to say, uh, hey, are you familiar with the history of uh, onomatopoeia? And you say, well, we don't, I don't think that's even a word. You know, I was thinking about haikus the other day. I say, where exactly are you going to use that? Uh, just in case, I'm just practicing. So anyway, we, we, I've gone on that tangent before. But those are the thoughts that go through my mind all all the time, but particularly as soon as stuff quiets down, that's why I go through the stuff. Thoughts, feelings, my feelings start coming up, uh, physical sensations. It could also be other stuff, changes in time, temperature, routine, work schedules, travel, guests, uh, anticipating something positive or anticipating something. You say, well, I got to get ready for this test or this life event or I'm helping somebody, or I'm going through something. The reason I list all that stuff is to let you know you're not alone. And I know this is digital, I know it's pseudo, but that doesn't change the fact of how it feels for me and a lot of other people in the deep dark. And it feels lonely, even when we're in the room with other people. And this show is kind of like a man, it's like a like a interruption to that, I guess, or a distraction from that loneliness. By letting you know, hey, I know how that, that feels. And maybe it doesn't feel that way for you. Maybe it's something different. And that's the other great thing is there's a lot of people listening. So while I may not be able to relate to how you feel or what you've been through, I mean, I'm pretty sure I can, at least on some level. But just in case I can't because I've never been through it, there's enough people listening right now. There's someone listening right now who is leaning in and can relate to how you feel. And they want to validate it, uh, to use a, like a regular, like a, like a defined word and say, hey, that is tough because I know how it feels and, and I hope this podcast can help you. That's what other people are doing right now and they're thinking of you. And, and I mean, I know in an indirect and, you know, and here's the thing, across the world. So we're, we are bound together in some nice way that's different, fuzzy way. I mean, like we're bound together by, there, there's the power, you know, Huey Lewis never sang about it, but the power of fuzzy navel, uh, I mean, that could be one of our, this, that's not quite a catchphrase, but that's what this show has, half a catchphrase, power of fuzzy navel. You see, I think you have the tense wrong on that, uh. You're talking about fuzzy navel to drink? No, no, no. Uh, the spirit of fuzzy. I don't know. Anyway, so whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to take your mind off of that and, and to keep you company so that you could fall asleep, to cut through the loneliness so that you could drift off at some point and, and get the rest you need because you deserve a bedtime you don't have to dread, that you don't have to, like, feel, like even, like, like, I mean, you know what I mean. And uh, this show hopefully will provide that to it for you. The rest you need so your life is a little bit better. So you could be out there flourishing. That means our world's a better place to be in. And the way I do it is I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm using lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. This is a podcast you just kind of barely listen to, almost like background noise, but you could listen to it if you need to. So it is like a friend rambling on the phone or in the other room or a half-heard conversation or a fuzzy picture 
I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff, but you just can kind of like li passively listen. Uh huh. Uh huh. You don't even have to verbalize it. But you could say, uh huh, fuzzy. Na yep, as fuzzy as an navel. So, uh, this is a podcast also that's not, I don't put you to sleep. I keep you company while you fall asleep. There is no pressure to fall asleep with this show. I'm going to be here over an hour to keep you company. There's over 600 free ad supported episodes ready to go for you to choose from. So I'm going to be here because there are people that listen all night long and stuff, uh, I'm here to keep you company, uh, whether you're awake or asleep, uh, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar best, your neighbor, your boar bee, your boars, your boar bra, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar, your boar friend, to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep and just take your mind off of stuff. Cause there's people who, who can't sleep or who listen to the show during the day who need a break. So I'm here to the very end, whether you're listening or not. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's, th those are two things to note. Uh, another thing is that's important. I kind of mentioned it earlier. Most people don't like this podcast when they first get here. Most people are like searching for something to help them fall asleep. And so you get here, you're already probably frustrated. You need some rest. And then you're listening to me ramble about, you know, weird, you know, you say, what is, I, this is not what I expected. I expected something much more. Uh, someone that maybe I didn't expect relatability because I can relate to this rambling. I expected somebody like, uh, like, uh, I mean, for me, this is just my experience, pressure filled aspiration. Cause when I, that's why I started making the show. I said, well, I can't, I don't think I could be like this person who is, um, floating above the trees and then looking Oh, and saying, Oh, Look at that pine cone. Hello, pine cone. I mean, I could do that in a genuine way, but it's going to be different and weird because then whatever, I'm going to anthropomorphize the pine cone or I'm going to wear it like a hat uh, instead of having a calm relationship with it and say, okay. Like, like that's why I have sleepwithmepodcast.com no thank you set up because there's shows that are more straightforward and relaxing. This show is more like a friend, uh, a, 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 a goofy friend here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. So it's okay if you don't like to show up first. There's most of the people that pay for the podcast uh, because they love it so much and they want it to be there and they want to have a customized experience. Those people didn't like the show when they first listened or they didn't. They said, this is not what I expected. So just see how it goes, because once it clicks, if it does for you, say, oh, I've been looking for this the whole time. I had no idea. Or maybe it's situational. I mean, I hear from people too. They say, oh yeah, that got me through this time. And I know the podcast will be there again if I need it. Uh, so just see how it goes. The other thing that people have very strong feelings about is the structure of the show. And, and it is like, you know, to offer a podcast or paying for it's optional that is consumed uh, like uh, by a lot of people. We've taken feedback and, and come up with a structure over the years, but it is adaptable if you need it to be. But at first, just kind of listen linearly because that's just how most people listen to the show. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just that we ha how we design the show with that consideration in mind to benefit the most people it can and to be flexible. So the show starts off with a teaser, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I say something silly, so you feel seen and welcomed in. Or today I already went on a long tangent at the beginning of the show, the teaser, which for most podcasts would be about 30, 15, 30 seconds. But for Sleep With Me, it's a bit longer. Uh, but it's just a greeting to say, hey, friend, come on in. Or, or, hey, friend, you don't need to come in. You could just look from afar and say, maybe I'll come in. Then there's uh, like sponsor support in our supporter zone. So the show's free, paying for it's optional. That benefits a lot of people. Then there's a long meandering intro, which is separate from the support. But once, I don't know, like, like it, it, I, I just have to point this out. Like the, the intro is a lot of, it's like for most people, the, most people like the only part of the show they hear. It's a part of the show that's familiar, but different every time. And it's a part of their bedtime routine, their wind down. The intro is not designed to put you to sleep. It may put people to sleep. And that's great. But for most people, it's part of easing you into bedtime. 
And again, like if, if you don't like the intros, you could start the show 20 or 30 minutes. If you listen all night, you're probably your best experience is supporting the show directly or unless it works for you. Like, uh, um, because it is again, like, uh, yeah, and, and, but, for, if for, but there's people that uh, support the podcast just to listen to intros. So just kind of see how it goes at first. But for a lot of people, the intro is just a fun thing to ease you into bedtime where we're slowly calming down. And that's what's been proven to work and works in my own life. Then there's support again, and then there's our bedtime story. Uh, and that's when most people start to drift off. Uh, and the bedtime story starts around 30 minutes in, 20 or 30 minutes in. And, and, and tonight I'll just go on a bunch of tangents about making journey into the world of friends and what maybe if I have time talk about what our next series might be. And yeah, so that's, and then at the end, there's thank yous and good nights. So that's a structure show. That's why I make the show work really hard. A team of people work really hard on the show because we care, because it's an interesting, creative challenge. And because I've been there and I know how it feels. So I really work hard and I yearn and I strive. I really hope this show can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here. I'm talking about Sleep With Me Plus. If you haven't checked out a trial, you know, there's a seven-day trial at all levels at Sleep With Me Plus. You go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sign up, you know, cancel in six days uh, before your trial renews. But I want to talk about an uh, email I get uh, somewhat often. It kind of goes like a little bit like this. So maybe you can relate to this email. You know, Scoots, I love this podcast. I've been listening to it for years. It has changed my life. It has changed how I sleep. And I know most people love listening to this ad supported version. They listen linearly and they wind down during the intro. They fall asleep during the story. But Scoots, I'm different. I love the show, man. But the thing is, I, I listen all night long and, you know, the just transitions between the shows and the ads or, oh, man, like with Supporter Zone, I fall asleep early during the intro and then I hear the Supporter Zone or so, the, the sponsors between the story or I'm a musician. So hearing the Mystery Bard sing and I want you to know, yeah, I see you. You love the podcast. It's had this powerful impact. I'm putting you to sleep. You consider that priceless, right? That's what we designed Sleep With Me Plus for, for all those people, people that listen all night, people that just want the intros, people that just want the stories, musicians who don't want any music, they get that story only feed, people that don't want to hear the supporter zone, they don't want to hear the ads, they don't want to hear the thank yous at the end. You just want one specific show, a lot of it, whether it's Bake Off or TNG or the store, certain stories, you want exclusive content. All those people are a little bit different and that's what we finally have been able to offer with Sleep With Me plus it's for those of you that say i love this show but it could, I, could, I could use a little bit more of this or a little bit less of this so get over there sleep with me plus was made for you we've been waiting 10 years to be able to do this for you so you could sign up and again test it out first uh, it works in almost every podcast app even on spotify and you can sign up at sleep with me podcast.com slash plus sleep with me podcast.com slash plus and check it out thanks Hey, everybody, this is Scoots, and this is our uh, review, like a look back and maybe look forward at our next series of our episodically modular series, Journey into the World of Friends. And these are very uh, lulling episodes, they tend to be, but uh, then for people that are interested in the process, they may do a day listen to this episode. Um, So, yeah, it's like where I look at kind of, you know, the series where like, especially with this one, there's a lot of, uh, unexpected things. Yeah. I guess, uh, it's interesting. Cause it's like some stuff I'm like, Oh, did I talk about this? But it's like, probably not. So yeah, let's see, like, uh, let's set some agenda here. Uh, I guess we could start out with, instead of the concept, some of the nuts and bolts of it, uh, just because that's what's in front of me. Is So this was the first series starting on episode eight, apparently, where I moved from handwriting, uh, handwritten notes uh, or writing the show hand, with handwriting on pen and paper to handwriting the show digitally. So I'll just talk a little bit about that process. Um, but if you're a patron and you're interested in that, uh, I could probably provide the handwritten notes in a way. 
I just got to figure out maybe I need to watermark them. I don't know. And this is something we've done in the past. Um, let me walk through that past history and one other digital attempt I did make uh, that did not work. Okay, so, so throughout the history of the show, both for the TV recaps and the written episodes, I handwrite them. Uh, I've used a multitude of different uh, pens aren't that important to me. I'm left-handed and, and I'm not, yeah, I do buy pens, but then you, you also, call, you know, pens appear in your life. And, you know, I like a, a nice, like, I'm not super particular about my pens. If you are, that's totally cool. I mean, it could be particular, but then it's like, and, and there have been times I have, but then I just lose the pens. So that's the only reason I'm not particular about the pens is I'm more of a lost and found pen person, not in the lost and found. But like like with pens, uh, Stephen still said it best, uh, write, write with the one you're with. Uh, pens. Uh, it, it Was that the song? It wasn't a Crosby, Stills, and Nash song. It was just Stephen Stills. Uh, when you're writing and you, you know, it's like write with the pen you have, uh, write with the pen you're with, uh, doesn't necessarily apply to other stuff, uh, but it does with pens. Uh, so, okay. But so here's the different things I've written in over the years and, 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 and have jumped back and forth for many, many eons of the podcast. Cause this goes back to 2014 or 2013. I would go back and forth between legal pads and uh, composition notebooks. And there's huge benefits in each one. Like I would buy them in bulk, obviously. Not huge bulk because I don't have a garage. Uh, but, you know, I buy them whatever, uh, a certain number at a time. I don't know which one I started with. Probably legal pads, uh, but may maybe it was composition books or whatever. Probably I started with whatever I had on hand. And then at some point, I think I developed a preference for a long time of legal pads, but a couple issues with legal pads and my life my, and, and my lifestyle. There's no way the way I live my life uh, that the first couple pages of that legal pad are going to be staying on on there. And also, so so that was one down. The main downside of the legal pad: one for a left-hander, legal pad's great uh, for writing. Though you don't have anything to rest your hand or your arm on. Uh, really good for um, having plenty of space and uh, stuff like that. But downside is you lose your top page. You also don't have a cover page. So at first glance, uh, like I would write it usually on the um, ripper off or thing at the top. Like uh, if I remembered... Uh, and then you could technically lose pages in between, depending on how messy I am, because I'm just a messy person. And, and I mean, my life involves a lot of transferring. It always has. For the long time, it was like I was literally, you know, I would get up, get ready for work, pack everything I needed for work and working on the podcast, bus, bike, or walk to the uh, train station, take a train to work. Uh, right on the train ride to work. Uh, sometimes I would switch workplaces in the middle of the day, so I'd take another train and ride on the train again. And then I would take the train home and ride on the train yet again and then put everything back in my bag and then do it again. And even now, so so that was like the downside of legal pad. It's just uh, whatever. It didn't work. Now, so then, I, so then at some point I was switching back and forth or sw using composition books. Uh, Man, this is great sleep podcast material. material. I don't mean to pat myself on the back. I would have no idea, even though I probably talked about this before. Composition books, a uh, lot of benefits. Sturdy, I would say hardy, except with one exception, which is a critical one, which we'll get to, a little teaser there. It has a front cover, but uh, usually there's like an abundance of pages, so... With the way Scoots organized this thing, front cover may not always be accurate because, um, like, what if I, you know, change it up in the middle of the thing? Uh, including the fact that at some point, okay, and this kind of goes into a downside, maybe too many pages. Uh, because what would happen is at some point I said, well, like I was working 
like, again, describe going into like working at different locations, really a lot of improvisational style working, not improv performance. But uh, I have 30 minutes. I'm at this location, which is not at home. What should I be working on for the podcast? And I don't have like maybe it's not working on a laptop. So it's like, oh, maybe I should be watching a TV recap. So what I did a lot of times with the composition books is I would work from the back for a TV recap and then the front with a written episode. And circumstantially, that's a good solution for the circumstances. But for organizational purposes and ease of use, it just had a lot of downsides. One was like, there's so many pages. So then you get into the middle sections. And I might have been like, hey, if this is Breaking Bad, like, where's the next episode or that? But the critical problem with composition books, and again, with me in composition books is, at some point, I'm going to need something to be to- torn out of there. And that means a, a uh, and I'm, I'm not, like, I may not decide to just go like, like a, when you tear out a page in the composition book, the corresponding opposite page immediately detaches. And what if that page is a thing? Also, I don't honestly know why. I mean, I could see with legal pads, it was just the losing of pages. That was, and not just not being able to at a quick glance say what is in this composition book. Because to be honest, like the time schedule, even now with this podcast, is very there's just so many pieces that go into making the podcast and having a proper mind frame. And so, like, if I get all the way down and set up to record and go through the process, and then I realize I have the wrong notebook. Like, that's just, like, get, keeping those errors, that's just an obstacle to making a good show in of, like, consideration of my time, like, taking care of a future scooter or whatever. And that would happen a lot, even with my next solution. But at some point, and I'm not exactly sure why, I think probably the, the number of pages, well, okay, the number of pages and also really taking two composition books with you and, oh, by the way, the composition books with the removal pages is the same issue. Like the tear out pages is the same issue. Like it, it just, those things are like a, a sturdy composition book without removable pages is sturdy even in Scoots's book until I violate the time space principle of a composition book and like it start to, start to start to impact its integrity by ripping a page out. So I think it was just the impossibility of travel, like traveling on a regular basis, a daily basis with two composition books, a laptop, other, maybe other like supplementary materials, uh, laptop charger, pens, my lunch, anything else I need for for work or now that I work work from home, uh, like three, two to three days a week two composition books and a laptop that's really pushing the limits of a laptop uh, sleeve uh and putting it in the main section of my backpack uh, so probably those are the reasons I left uh, composition books at some point and again I don't know the number A4 A5 but at some sense some point I got maybe I picked up a couple and I, I don't know people that went to university or at least my university or college experience in the U.S. was that uh, you would take most of your essay-based tests uh, in these college, these small square notebooks uh, or test booklets uh, that, I mean, those ones had a soft cover. Maybe they're called, I don't remember what we would call them. They were light blue, blue book. Is that what they called them? And at some point, I think either during a giveaway at a conference or something, I got a couple of those, or maybe I bought some, or I, I don't know. But I had a couple access to a couple of those, and I was kind of playing around with them. Maybe it was even personal journey journaling. And I said, "Wait a second, can you just buy these?" Uh, and then I realized that I went into that world, which has been the world probably since, I mean, definitely before 2018. I mean, maybe I'm guessing, so I shouldn't say definitely, but more than likely at least five to six years of this, this, this would have been up until recently, um, uh, of these, a, we'll still call them A5s, even though I don't know if they're A5s, uh, which have a paperboard cover. Um, they have a certain number of pages 
which is usually enough pages to do two episodes of a TV show or about two episodes of a sleep podcast, a written sleep podcast. They have a blank front cover that most colors uh, you could uh, like write on and say, hey, this is episode five and six, or hey, this is a Great British Bake Off two and three. And then if it goes over, I say plus half of four, one of two. And uh, they, you can get them in different colors. So then at least I would know, and it's still, and I never had a system. So, so uh, but at least at, at a glance, I'd say, oh, okay, that's uh, Journey in the World of Friends 5 is red. And both of those, if you have two of those, one for your TV recap and one for your written episodes, they easily fit in a, a, a laptop. They don't take up a lot of space. They're also sturdy. If I was traveling on a trip, even taking three of them, like two that have already started writing in, let's say I'm going out of town for a week or even two weeks, easily to take, it's easy to take three, maybe even four, but four may be more than I need. And they're very sturdy and they're short enough and, and I just have like, and maybe fragile enough that I'd never tear pages out of them. Because again, like the composition book, uh, like, I guess I more have a sense of their fragility, so I just don't t- take pages out of them. I mean, not 100%. You know, I've done, I've broken that rule, but I've regretted it. But they also have, like, their back cover. So it's like if I need to ri- write something down, maybe I just write it on the back cover. Okay, this moves into our new n- n- current setup, which who knows how long this will last. But a couple, a couple things I tried in the interim there. So you can kind of see... What the things are at some point when I, I think maybe before the Patreon or once we had a Patreon, I said, what if I took picture, like I digitized our written notebooks? So long-term listeners will remember a lot of stuff around this probably better than me. So I would take, I would use an app called scannable that would create a PDF and I would just take pictures, but that's very time consuming. I even tried paying my daughter to do it, but it was like, uh, it was just very time consuming and, uh, um, it just didn't work. It was no workable way. Believe it or not, like I have, like there was even a time where I was giving giveaways to those, like you could do some stuff and I would send you one of my old notebooks that I digitized. Um, but again, that was also pretty, um, labor intensive, um, where I said, well, shouldn't I just be working on what's got to get done for the weekend? So, um, so that didn't really work, even though in the grand scheme of things, it would have been like, oh, that would have been cool to have everything digitized. But I just like don't have this. Even if I had the system, I don't think we would have the time. Or at this point where everybody's paid that works on the show, it's like, OK, well, there's no way to offset that time or labor cost. So that went out of the window. But at some point um, on some forum somewhere. Uh, it, where they talk about discounts and writing stuff. There was a discounted system where it was like a, a notebook uh, that was erasable and digitizable. N- it wasn't digital. Like it was uh, paper-like, but it, like, uh, it was like a plastic, like not quite like, I, I don't know how to describe it. I think it was called Rocket Book. And conceptually, it was a pretty cool idea. It was semi-permanent ink that you could erase. Um, but I did find with the lefty situation, that was an issue. And then again, like, uh, like so you would write in the notebook, and it probably had like 20 pages, and then you could take pic- digitize it with their app and then erase it with a special, I think like a spray and a wipe or whatever. But uh, with I think the main downside of that was like again have, having the time to do a system like that, and also being left-handed. Okay, so fast forward to actually just this spring, I was in conversation with someone outside the podcast in a different business that involves a lot of handwriting and legal pads actually, and they said, you know, I just switched from legal pads to this. Uh, now, they had a dedicated device for it, but they were, I was like, can you tell me, like, they had mentioned in passing how happy they were. And they were friends, so I said, hey, can you tell me more about this? Like, uh, and they were telling me all the benefits and showing me it, and uh, I was like, wow, that really seems to work. So, at first, I literally was about to jump in. 
with this dedicated device. But then I said, uh, somehow, and again, this is just my choices, not right or wrong choices. And knowing myself, I said, whoa, 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 let's not spend any money um, just yet. Uh, and then I kind of reassessed and read some reviews. And again, then I said, I, I think this is going to be a good choice. And then I said, okay, let's reassess it one more time. It wasn't super expensive either. But it's just the idea of adding a new device where you kind of get into this portability. And it seems very portable and very thin, but it's like, uh, okay, a um, couple issues. So the, the, this is just for my unique situation. One, okay, if I go out of town now, like, so I have dyslexia. So I already have, I can't, when, when, and part of my wind down routine is reading a book on a Kindle because I need... I can, it's more, it's, it has accessibility features so I can read when I go to bed. So like literally I can't, and, and it, it doesn't have the light, blue light, like you have to worry about with your phone or a tablet. Uh, and so like, I really, it really is difficult for me to sleep if I go, if somehow I go out of town and I don't have a Kindle, like, uh, because, uh, it's just part of my routine. It's a comfort thing. And it's an accessibility thing. So if I go anywhere, even for one night, I really have to have that device with me. Then I already have to have my um, laptop with me, right? Then if I'm be gone longer than two or three nights, I could, I probably, it's definitely easier on me to have the old broken iPad, which is like an old iPad I have with a cracked screen, have a screen protector on it. Oh, that'll become part of the story, actually, the current screen protector. But so I said, okay, like I have to have that. I mean, I could watch stuff on my phone or my laptop, but again, like uh, most apps don't allow you to download stuff onto your app to laptop to watch. And trying to take notes in on a plane while you're watching something on your phone where you're looking for details is just not, not, good, not good for the podcast. So I said, oh, do I really need another, like mixing another device into that mix as nice as it sounds and as it sounds like it's workable um, is probably not a good idea. Then I also was like, well, what if I don't like it? Uh, you know, I could return it, it but within whatever, 30 days. But it's like, what if, you know, it's like day 60. It just didn't seem like a good use of resources, to be honest, with me. If I'm not going to use it for like two to three years, even if it's only a couple hundred bucks, that's kind of my thing is like, uh, okay, it's, it, let's say it's 300 bucks. Let's say it's 365 bucks, even though I think it was less than that. You say, okay, you think you're going to use it every day for two years or most days, two years? Okay, that's 50 cents. Okay, three, then three, what you think you'll use this every day for three years, maybe? Then you're in, then you're at 33 cents. Of daily. Okay. So that's kind of, I don't know, that's just one of the ways I use to, to think about my, like, okay, well, that's a pretty good deal. If you're using it and writing every day, 50 cents is a bargain. But if you're only going to use it for six months, it, like, uh, it's just, so anyway, so those are the things. So then what I did was I said, what about um one of these pencils you could use with a, uh, could I use a pencil within my old broken eye, my old uh, cracked screen iPad? or a stylus or something. And then I have an old stylus, a couple of them, like, a, a, you know, just a, a finger replicator, we'll say. And they said, well, I got to get a better uh, screen protector from my iPad be, just be for the cracked screen for, 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 you, for people using its protection. So I got one that was like a, fe like a little bit more texture and I tried that with the stylus. But again, the left-handed part was like an issue. But I said, okay, this is, and again, I'm still working in my pen and paper notebooks during this time. These are just like uh, ongoing experiments in the spring. Then I returned to that idea and they said, no. And then I said, wait a second, like uh, you're using this old broken iPad, which is sooner or later going to get like, uh, it's, it, you've, you've w way exceeded the three-year mark of owning this iPad and uh, of... Uh, you're still getting use out of it, but maybe you shouldn't be work using it. Uh, maybe you should just get a new device where you could that like uh, like what if you could get a new device uh, that you could watch stuff for the podcast on it, write in it, 
and uh, like do other like read emails or like watch stuff when I'm recording the podcast or whatever. So that's what I stumbled on. Like, it's like, just, oh, why don't you replace your iPad and get an Apple Pencil too or whatever? And so eventually, I, and then I found out, okay, well, what app would I use? And again, I tested this stuff before I made the purchases. It just, it, the, the, I don't know if that's super important, but finally, that's what I got to. And I said, okay, let's do that. And so then I said, and, and then I was like comfortable. I said, okay, if this doesn't work, uh, like, uh, I still have a device that I'm going to get value out of uh, and still like can use it to, for the production of the podcast in a lot of ways, even if I don't use it to, to, to hand write notes. But I, but I, and I'll be honest with you, I've been absolutely blown away with the ability. So, so I got the, so, I mean, this is just what I'm using again, but I got a smaller, what is it? Mini iPad. I have the Apple pencil too, I believe. And then I use an app called Good Notes, uh, and I, again, I was able to test it out, you know, with a monthly subscription. Though they have annual subscriptions, I think, or, or maybe there was a trial and you purchased it. And it, so the benefits of that have been it's about the same size as the notebook I was already using. There's ha settings for left-handers, and you know, with some testing and learning, it's like it's pretty much like handwriting, pen and paper, though you can erase a little bit easier. And you could create different, I mean, I create different notebooks. So basically, I guess that's it about uh, where we're at, starting on episode. And now it's easy for me to look back that it was uh, uh, Journey of World of Friends 8 that I started testing it out. Uh, and you can, I can even see that there's different uh, pen styles and stuff. Uh, and you could kind of choose, like I started with graph paper, which I seem to prefer, but lately, whatever, the auto update uh, now is choosing plain paper for me. So I have to figure out that setting. So, okay, so that that's it of like the nuts and bolts. That was the uh, first half. Okay, let's get into this journey into the world of friends, though. So conceptually, uh, those of you that listen to, if you haven't listened to journey into, what is it? Uh, is it called Journey into the World of Tomorrow or something like that? Uh, is it, they both start with Journey? I think so. Maybe that was the, the um, but whatever. We did a series a few years ago where Journey into the Land of Tomorrow, I think it was called. I mean, I make this pod, J-Lot. Yeah, it was called J-Lot. It was the shorthand, Journey into the Land of Tomorrow. So that's what I would have put on the front of the notebook, J-Lot 1. And that was like, uh, came out of, uh, that time we all spent at home in 2020 and, uh, playing a D and D with family members and then saying, Hey, what about doing something like this as a series, a group of friends playing a role-playing game. And it also came from my daughter and I taking, um, uh, that, uh, uh, hap like like a like at the Yale or Harvard happiness course, and um trying that out and saying oh, okay like uh um like the the like just one of the things was like I don't know we I, I think we both ended up like doing some imagineering oh no 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 this is a different course we took an imagineering course I think uh. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. So anyway, I don't know. I guess turns out I have no idea. Lori Santos, right? And um, so whatever, like part of whatever one of those two things was like, hey, you know, what's up with this Tomorrowland? It doesn't work in Disneyland or Disney World, in my opinion. So I was just playing around with those ideas. And I said, wait a second. This is like separate from the sleep podcast as a shared interest with my daughter and a hobby or for relaxation. But then I was like, yeah, this is interesting. Like, it'd be cool, like, uh, for characters to, like, explore something new. And, you know, like, and then I said, oh, wait a second. Like, this could be, like, a campaign in a D and d adventure. So that was where that series came out of, uh, about friends going into it. And then I said, oh, wait a second. This could also be the same theme park. It could take place in the same world as a, the girl from a theme park or a girl who the theme park raised a girl who raised a theme park, theme park who raised a girl. Untitled series we have, uh, Theme Park Girl, Girl in a Theme Park, uh, which is in no other older series you could check out. Uh, I don't know if it's pre-600 or not. 
Um, but, you know, if it is, then you support the show directly. You can listen like uh, or uh, it might be at post 600. Okay, so that series went well, I thought. Uh, and, and I said, okay, at some point I liked the characters. I liked their interactions. I liked a couple things about it. So I said, I'd like to return to that someday. And then I also have had for years this idea of the girl in a theme park, return, like anytime I ride, what's it called? Small world. My story brain absolutely explodes. Like it's like if everybody in this ride was sentient, uh, this is like a story, the, the story, a load, a story load. What do they call it? Mother load? Yeah. Like, uh, and uh, constantly taking notes when I'm riding that ride of like, okay, like, and then like for the girl in a the theme park, but it's never quite, I mean, this has been like whatever, since I made that series, anytime I ride that ride, I'm taking the same notes. So, but it never quite has like gotten over that of like, uh, that final hump to go into production. And then at some point I said, wait a second, this could also be the adventure for the, um, the, like, like journey into the land of tomorrow. Um, and I said, yeah, this would be cool. Like them, like if it was like a one-off adventure of them going into this attraction. And then I, then initially, to be honest, like, uh, like, like uh, I said, okay, well, um, what if we did, what if we could have both, uh, and then I said, well, this is the kind of conversations I honestly have with myself in the relaxed times of like, uh, pre-writing, like when I'm taking a shower, walking the dog. Okay. Well, um, okay. Well, so you would, what do you mean you to have both? And I said, well, we could do like, uh, two timelines. Maybe we switch back and forth. Or maybe we do five episodes with the adventurers and then five episodes with the girl in a theme park. And I said, okay, okay. But again, I don't have pre-writing time. So there isn't a, 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 it's just part of my creative process too. I think it's better if I focus on the one series, even if I did have time, which I don't conceivably see how that would happen. Like the idea of me like writing on one series for two hours or whatever, and then switching to the other one, like if there was a magical, like a gift of time or something like that, just, I don't see that, uh, I don't know that brain shift. I don't know about it. So it's just better if I'm pre-imagining. So I can't, and again, like the podcast is a moving train. And I know this is hard for, like, if you're not in this kind of production to wrap your head around. Because a lot of people say, well, why don't you just take a break or put out repeats or um, put the show on hold. But those things, it just doesn't work for the sustainability of the podcast. The podcast has to stick to a regular schedule with new releases in order to exist even the, even for the old content to be there, it's just kind of the mechanisms of the creator economy. <laughs> like it just is like, uh, and so, and I, and I mean, I've found that to be workable at this point, uh, but it has limitations. So that's like a limitation of it. It's like, uh, like for me, it's like, okay, I've got to be putting out every other week, uh, re recording every other week, unless there's a, a, a schedule a break way ahead of time an episode of the written series. Uh, and it's just what I prefer to be honest, even, you know, sometimes like hard work, like it's like, even when it's hard work or intense work, it's like, well, that's my preference. I think it's what works for the show. Like, uh, so even me supposed to sound free and easy, but this kind of stuff is what makes it sound free and easy. And it's like a creative challenge that I enjoy 60% of the time. Uh, so, um, okay. So, uh, so it just, it doesn't give me a lot of time to pre-prep series or know where they're going to go, but that's, I guess, a freedom too. So I didn't have time to even like literally in today's the day, like just to jump ahead yesterday, I finished and recorded journey into world of friends finale. So this morning was the first day writing on the new series that's going to come out that I'll record in about two weeks episode one. So that's literally the lead time. I have bare, just a bare concept and a few images and ideas. And then I'm, I'm going to deliver episode one. 
And again, it's different rules for a sleep podcast than a TV show or a film or a book uh, or a short story. It's just a different uh, a rule, rule system. But that's always kind of sleeping me as like it, it becomes what it is while I'm making it. So that and I guess that's what so that leads into, yeah, this series, this show or this series became what it was as I was making it. But when I was initially getting ready to make it and even writing the first episode or two, I thought it might be this two hander or whatever you want to call it, like or two two timeliner. Like, but they would not like, but they're not the timelines or are maybe uh they're not over like they're in uh parallel, not overlapping. Um I didn't want it to become uh an interactive timeline. So these timelines would have remained separate because uh I don't know. I just thought that like they they just seemed very distinctly separate things uh, in separate tones, and I think that's important because that's what ended up happening. Was like okay, yeah, but like as I was writing with Journey into the World of Friends and inhabiting those characters and that kind of narrative voice to that show, I could easily, even on a gut level, sense the distinctness of like how you how do you go from this style like to a totally different style of the girl in the theme park, which is, was those episodes were narrated by each attraction about her presence there or by, um, they're kind of like this third party narrator and they just had a different style and feel to them. Um, and she as a character has a very different style and feel. It's just a much different, even though they're taking place in the same worlds, uh, I would say that that one's like ethereal in a sense, maybe. I don't know. And so I was troubled by that, to be honest. I said, okay, this is creatively troubling. Like, uh, clearly, as I was getting episode one done, I was like, okay, can't just go to another episode one with Girl in a Theme Park. Like, I'm not, like, I don't have the substance here. I'm not even sure what this journey into World of Friends Like, I want to get this story flushed out a little more. So I said, okay, well, maybe we'll do a back half or maybe we'll produce enough and and mix them up uh, after I've written them. Like, maybe I'll do three and then three and then three and then three. But that that gut sense that, like, I don't know if this is workable. And honestly, like, a lot of times I do have to put myself in the listener's shoes and say, what would that be experience like? Even if they're six episodes apart or four episodes apart or whatever, it's like that's, uh, if it's jarring to me creatively, like switching, it's probably going to be jarring to a listener, even though, uh, you, you, I think you know what I'm saying. Uh, so at some point during the process, that idea was just set aside. And I said, no, I'm just going to focus on this. So like probably around episode two or three or four, it was like, no, that uh, the conception, I'm just going to stick with this story or whatever, not conceptually. I'm going to just c- c- stick with this. And, and it, honestly, at the time I said, well, maybe we'll just cut it short. Like we'll make 10 episodes. So that was, that's one creative, uh, Venn part of the Venn diagram, I don't know, or whatever, like one creative area. There was a couple others, like, uh, this was the second year that I wanted to produce seasonal episodes within an episodically modular series when, when I'm recording them ahead of time and writing them ahead of time. And there's a very fluid schedule and this year was slightly more successful and probably next year will be even more. Oh, next year, I, like I'm hoping to wrap it up so we can do a seasonal series. But um, like uh, this year was slightly more successful. I was able to record uh, a ho- like a, a Halloween episode that could have been used other places. So it was a vague Halloween episode. Then I wanted to record like a Turkey Day style episode, but... Uh, like that, I said, okay, I don't think that's workable and, uh, like within the schedule. Cause we just didn't have a ton of wiggle room, which I'll talk about too. But then I did get to the point where it was like, okay, let's do, I, we do have, we, we could do a holiday style episode. And then I was able to just write a holiday style episode that was its own campaign or whatever, its own little adventure. Now, the other thing that happened was, while initially I was like, well, this could be 10 episodes, suddenly this became one of our 
in, in, in whatever you want to call the modern era of sleep with me, where we stuck to 10 or 12 episodes, this one will clock in at, uh, not counting this episode, 12, 14, plus this episode is 15 with a little holiday break, uh, I think, uh, so, um, yeah, like, uh, which is just, just because of the story asked that of me, honestly, like, uh, and honestly, I could have probably gone, uh, I mean, I could have like stayed in that world. I mean, it just was like one of those unli- world of unlimited choices. I mean, keeping it on the rails, uh, versus like, uh, where would they go next or what other rooms or what other care? What, like it, it really was, is like, that's why I was doing so much writing when I'm on that attraction, which bodes good for one day, not, not in 20, early 2024 or pro- probably maybe not in 2024, the girl in a theme park going there. But yeah, honestly, probably not in 2024. Um, so, um, like, uh, so, but there was another like big creative, uh, a dis- couple big creative decisions that we'll kind of wrap up with. And I kind of feel like the analogy is like, um, like one of those, like it was almost like a mural. Like if you had like a, a 50 foot stretch of wall and I'm not a f- visual artist, so but you have a mural that the artist is drawing from the left side of the 50 thing all the way to the right side of the like 50. And as they're drawing it, it becomes more and more detailed until they get to the end where it's very detailed. And then they go back and then they like uh, add color, like, like they're just drawing outlines and then they go back and at about 24 feet, you notice that there's some light colors and then slowly colors and, and uh, more details and more and more depth and visual elements develop until you get to, to the 50th foot. And, and I don't know, like, uh, exactly, it's a, it's a metaphor because the development of the show kind of felt like that to me, uh, this show, and, and, uh, and just... Uh, Like as, and some people don't like this, like that makes stuff. And and I'm not one to say there's a right way or wrong way. Like this is just the creative choices I was making and within a very specific context, but it's like for sleep with me at least. And in my opinion, that's okay. Like, uh, to be like, I think I'm making this. Oh, wait a second. Like, uh, like, and then by the end being like, oh, this is, uh, much clearer than what you started with. So when I started, um, even before I knew that there wasn't going to be a split, the, the, like, but even when I started, I said, okay, we got a situation here because when we did the first series, we were playing D and D on a regular base, a weekly basis. Um, and we were very familiar and our brains were just uh, like, I was the DM. And so like I was in a DM headspace. And I was just kind of familiar with the beats of uh, like a daily, like a weekly meeting and of like the structure and stuff. And I think like, um, I, I don't know, like, like, so like, I'm not, I was not in that place when I got, uh, when I got to like starting the series and, the, and there's a big important thing there is like, when I first started, I said, holy cow, now I'm going to have to write a campaign because I don't have like this, like, uh, these like faint, like, uh, images, like, uh, from like looking at something that are still in my brain. Like I'm gonna have to write a campaign from scratch and then have the characters play the campaign. And then like, so I'm gonna have to write the campaign, then have the characters, then write the characters playing the campaign, which is two separate layers of writing, two different styles of writing. And at first I said, okay, like, like, let's go for it, man. Definitely a fun creative challenge, uh, especially, hey, okay, this, this campaign is going to be just in this one attraction. So I like did a bunch of research and a bunch of reading, but <laughs> bought some new books, uh, like, like looked over those books and resources, uh, 
familiarized, refamiliarized myself with some of the rules and uh, what do you, what are people thinking when they're going into develop campaigns? And that's very time consuming and it's a different style of work than writing episodes of a sleep podcast. Uh, and so it tended, it, it tended to stretch out what it was taking to produce the first couple episodes. Um, even at some point, maybe in the first episode, I said, okay, wait, first of all, like, uh, like, I don't know, like, so where I slowly started like shedding some of these ideas and, 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 or maybe it was in the first writing the first episode, maybe the second one, though I can remember like planning the, plotting the campaign very specifically. So home base, start, like starter adventures motivations, secret motivations, or like, uh, want versus need for each of the characters. Okay. What are the, um, rumors, you know, the kind of first things like this is a very D and D, but, um, this is again, another important kind of part is like this show became not a D and D, uh, whatever those podcasts are called, like, uh, actual play or whatever. Like that was what Journey into the Land of Tomorrow was. It was a fictional, a fictional, fictional actual play podcast. Fictional characters playing a f- fictional campaign, actual like actual play. But, but but so this show was very different. Uh, eventually, but I started out making that okay. This is going to be fictional characters playing a fictional role playing game campaign. So you have to write both kinds of fiction and it's fun. Um, don't get me wrong, but it, like writing a D and D campaign is like just a different style of writing and then writing fictional people playing that campaign. is a totally different style of writing. It may not sound like it, but it is, uh, one is much more analytical and intellectual and, uh, like a b- b- very building be a world based on concrete rules. And then another one is based on interpersonal dynamics and, uh, choice, whatever, like it's different, just different styles. So like, I realized like from this, like, like a lot of people that listen to these shows realize like, uh, there's the budgets for the podcast and the time budget is, uh, one of those shows, one of those budgets for the show that uh, is very limited, uh, even with more resources. I mean, well, right now we don't, but like, even if we had more resources, like uh, that, that time budget just wouldn't, wouldn't shift very much just because there's only like, so, uh, I mean, it's just, just a reality. So very quickly I said, okay, we're, we're coming, sh- we're like, uh, like I'm coming up short on the time budget, uh, and, uh, so this isn't working. Uh, and, uh, so at some point I was like, wait a second, like, what if they, um, and it actually happened way more organically than it sounds. Cause now I'm like quarterbacking it. Cause I don't know the episodes, but basically it started with them in the, the town, which was main street, USA train station area. And it was blocked off and they were there. Like very, if you've played those games before, like they had their call to ad, initial call to adventure from the Baron of the Boil. Now, meanwhile, that's one thing, but then also I had to think about the actual players and write their thing. And I said, okay, like they haven't played together in a while. There's been some interpersonal things because there has to be interpersonal C O N F L I C T, like even in a sleep podcast. Otherwise, the show would be too boring and uh, it wouldn't work. Like, so there has to be different levels of CL, you know, interper- like not, interpersonal is only one. But so, um, I don't know, at some point I said, okay, this just isn't working. But but it was more like on a daily basis. So it was subtle because it was like uh, they went from where they were. I think maybe they took two episodes for them to head out. Then they headed out to this plaza and they encountered the polywogs and toads and stuff. And again, like it was like at some point in there, I realized, oh, they'll be making the adventure. I can remember I was running in Strawberry Canyon in Berkeley and either thinking about the episode or listening to it and saying, okay, like, yeah, this is going to work better if they're designing the campaign 
And it doesn't just work on one level. It worked on the personal level, too, because it's like, what are these characters' investment in this game and their personal investments in one another? And how does that play out in the story? And it's a different story if, like, there's a DM and there's a set campaign you're following that's, uh, that's set that, uh, and then you create the, the interpersonal story, like, how many layers of fiction are we taught? I think there's three layers, but like, uh, that's different. And it, if, if you have a strong, like that offers one opportunity, like we saw in the first series, it was very straightforward and it actually had like, uh, whatever red herrings. It's like, okay, we have to collect these three pieces of this staff and go here and then do this, uh, where this one, it was more, I don't know. I don't know how to explain, like, I can just explain that. Uh, eventually got to the fact where it's like, okay, this will work better for the character story, too. If they're working together, that just has more elements at this point. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, that part of the story, the human part of the story, the heart of the story, w- it was more interesting for them to try to build a campaign together particularly because there was like a new romantic, like there was romantic changes and a new like romantic partner in the, the series. And it was very vague, uh, but that their world, they were experiencing new changes to their world that they lived in. And again, so vague that, like I said, like when I started the series, I didn't quite know that. But as I got on, it was like, oh, more and more details were getting filled in, in my head at least, maybe not in the story. Oh, they're all like uh, living just together in this one place now, which they didn't plan on doing. And they're kind of escaping through this game. And then it suddenly became, um, wait a second, like, uh, and I had no intention of this when I planned it, but it was like, does this, like the story changed on me where I was like, I think these characters need to be in this game. Uh and uh, just just where there was just this creative shift, uh, and it was subtle, but it was like, hey, they, they need to live in the game. Uh, and again, those details became more and more thing. Like, as I was like, okay, like, uh, even though, like, even at the end, I wanted to kind of explain away or put a button on it and have them return home or have a reason why they didn't return home. I mean, there is reasons in the, in the story world, but like... Uh, like, it's not so clean, and, and because I said, well, this just isn't clean, really. But where it suddenly just became like, okay, the characters are going to stay, this world, uh, like, almost like that, like, where they were, like, wait a second, we're the, like, it's like, that's like the mural analogy taking it deeper, it's like, and I mean, this happens when you're writing a lot of times, or I do, like, not in this series, but like, where it's like, that person is drawing the mural and they're realizing they're drawing them. They're like, I'm in the mural. Like, uh, like, or I'm, wow, I didn't realize I'm writing, like drawing out these issues. Like, oh boy, I didn't realize that looks like the person I'm unhappy with. Uh, so I don't know. There's something about it. And it also came, I mean, I'm sure I can't point to this directly, but there is like this thing of like, um, listening to listeners, but not like, like, uh, and the seeds being planted and, and empathizing and having compassion, putting myself in the listener shoes of like, uh, um, just these subtle things that people like, uh, and, and I mean, please don't send me harsh feedback because uh, that won't like, that won't help. But like, uh, I don't know, just the idea that an actual play show has this exclusive exclusivity to it. I don't know. I, I have to have a sense that that also influenced where this became suddenly a story that was just a work of fiction and not fictional, actual play fiction, f- fictional fiction of actual play fiction. But the fun thing was it became this mechanism that you could still, I could still play with and the characters could still play with. Like it was like, there was never a point until the very close to the last few episodes where it was like they were a hundred percent sure this was real. And even where, I, and, and I mean, like, this is me pulling the cover off, like where I was like, sure how it was going to end until, I don't know, like 10, maybe 11. 
probably nine. I don't know when, because I haven't listened to those episodes in a while, but like, uh, where I was like, oh no, this, sh- they, this is it. Like, uh, this is not a dream. I didn't want it to be a dream or like, like this isn't some metaphorical experience. Uh, no, this is real. Like, uh, you've tr- transferred into this world. And I don't know, that changed the stakes and stuff, like mostly the emotional stakes. Uh, um, but, uh, why was I talking about that? Uh, I don't know. So I don't know. It just became important. Oh, that like, in some sense, it just became a story, uh, of characters in the journey. And I think like, again, maybe sometimes the, it's like they needed to journey into the world of friends to journey into their own world of friends. But on the journey, they actually did journey into the world of friends, uh, uh, I didn't realize that that third part would be there where it's like, no, no, you have journeyed into the world of friends. Uh, like that wasn't my intention naming the series or starting the series, but it was like, if there was some, um, um, what do they call the omniscient or whatever thing in that story universe would have said, no, you have journeyed into this. It wasn't metaphorical. You've journeyed into the world of friends. Like, I'm sorry. Like if like and you're gonna be okay if Emma Otter was there she, like at the end of the so like, oh, don't worry I'll be well but yeah you have fully journeyed into the world of friends I mean which is cool because I didn't expect that to be like I mean I don't know what year we'll return to this world but 2020 I don't know like uh, it's interesting to me like what the the story on a uh, setup like uh, in in an unintentional way it was like okay. And like, even like at the end of the last episode, like, okay, this could have played out a lot of different ways, like with different adventurers. So I don't know. That's that. Um, the only other important thing I am like is like, uh, moving forward to the next series is, uh, so I won't talk about it too much. So then I'll have plenty to talk about when we conclude that series, but it's like, uh, I still haven't a hundred percent figured out the narrative voice for the next series. I think I have a general idea of it, but like some of the concepts have popped, uh, where I had the initial images and the initial thing I was curious about, uh, which all like I'm writing the first episode, which those will be a big part of the first episode. But, uh, that, uh, like, uh, that, that, um, like it won't be maybe until I record it, like, oh, okay, this is what the narration's going to feel like. But I do want to keep it in mind that there is a shift because I know like that's just a listener preference thing. It's also a cool creative constraint is like, who is narrating this? Why? Like, what do they know? And what is that narration style? And I mean, I, I'm still like, I had one idea like last week or two weeks ago that was new. Like I said, I don't know, man. And then this idea was like, Oh, what about this? I see, I I started to see who they were, where they were and how they were talking about the general story. And then I said, and then this past week when it's gotten closer till today, I said, well, but I don't know. Um, does it, can it, does it need to shift or will that work? So I don't know, just grateful I get to make a sleep podcast and face these uh, challenges, uh, and, and that, uh, that, uh, like, and again, people ask, like, is it matter, like, or bot? And I say, no, no, this is cool that I get to, like, this is the context of the show that most people sleep through it is like a part of this whole creative construct, uh, that makes it fun. It's like a totally different challenge. It has different, it has a lot of the rules are similar, in my belief that, uh, some part of our brain is tracking this. And even like this, it has to come to a conclusion, even if people aren't listening or not, and it has to follow a familiar structure, but within that familiar structure and some of the familiar things, uh, about narr- narrative stuff, uh, narrative stuff, uh, that, uh, that the, within the sleep podcast, there's this huge, uh, other operating rules that you're allowed to do like fiction within fiction within fiction. I mean, I, you can, re, you can read that too, but, um, I don't know. There's just, just some of the rules are a little bit looser, which makes it great. Uh, and of course the like, whatever, uh, 
what do they call that person that's checking coherence and not coherency, but coherency is one thing we don't necessarily need as much of, uh, in that other C word about like, uh, this, uh, that doesn't make sense but when you release an episode three, what they did in episode seven doesn't make any sense. And I say, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're definitely right about that. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's dream. It's dreamy, man. It's just like, uh, so yeah, I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate it. And, uh, good night, everybody. All will be well, as Emma Otter says. All right. This is Scoot. So I'm going to say thanks and good night to the, um, 400 through 500 people signed up to support the show back the first time we ever asked for support. Uh, and these are people that, uh, support the show or, um, no longer do, but it's, they were the ones that, uh, they're one of the main reasons Sleep With Me exists today, uh, each of them individually and collectively. So, yeah, I want to thank Joe, Eric, and Leonard, uh, Vanessa, Meow, and Langer, uh, Jessica J., who's still a patron, Patricia L., who's still a patron. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ariel, David, and Victoria, thanks, thanks, and good night. Daniel, Elizabeth, and Gustavo, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Aaron, Jason, and Stephanie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Neil, Kimberly, and Chris, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, ben, Patrick, and Fred, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Mary, Christopher, and Chelsea, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sophie, Joanne, and Patty, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Laura, Alec, Alec's still a patron, Alec M, and still very, like, uh, involved in, uh, you know, just uh, involved in the community. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Aaron, uh, Paul, and Ian, thanks, thanks, and good night. Brendan, a lot of declined, uh, T Tammy. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. You know, Justin P, an active patron still. Thanks, Justin. 438 or 430, but that's on the spreadsheet. So 437. Thanks, Justin. Tony, uh, then Jess K, another pr pretty active person. 4440. So 439, Jess. Uh, Fern, another person I've interacted with. Matthew P, another person I regularly interact with. Uh, 442, Matthew. So 441. Ragnar, Pam, Allison, Sean M with Sean with a W, uh, 446. Thanks and good night, Sean. Thanks. So you're 445. Uh, Russell, D Delia, and Nicole. Thanks. Thanks and good night. Daniel A. Not sure if this is my nephew or my brother, Daniel. And I don't have a way to find out either, but, uh, uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, either both of you, because I know you're both. Oh, you know, then, yeah. Okay, so it's my brother, Daniel. His Meredith is there, too. So uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, Thomas, uh, Stephanie, and Catherine, thanks, thanks, and good night. Paul, Carrie, thanks, and good night. Tara, T-A-R-A, -A, so Tara or Tara. Uh, M, is still active patron, 457. Uh, Chloe. Ryan, Jenny, thanks, thanks, and good night. And why, Corey, and Jillian, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kiri, Melanie, and Jake, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kevin K. Kevin K. I haven't heard from you in a while, but I remember uh, interacting with you. Still a patron, Kevin K. is uh, 467. So 466, Kevin. Uh, Daniel, Andrew, and Amy, thanks, thanks, and good night. Stephanie. Christy and Steve, thanks, thanks, and good night. Christy, John, and Kate, Kathy, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jacob, Julie, and Dobbs, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kathy, Amy, and Katie, thanks, thanks, and good night. And then Diane L., uh, still a patron, Diane L., uh, 481, so 480. Uh, let's see, we got Diane M., um, Matt and uh, Glitterati. Oh, gl oh, no, Glitterati's still a patron. Uh, so thanks, Glitterati. Four, four, 486, uh, so 485. Elaine, hello. Uh, thanks. Uh, 
Salasa still a patron. Thank you, Salasa. Uh, four eighty nine and Nicole S is still a patron. Four ninety. Uh, Teresa Peter, <laughs> someone with the same name as uh, the uh, web based uh, hero, Peter P. Not a patron anymore. So, uh, Ian, Joel, and Jessica. Thanks, thanks, good night. Wendy F. Uh, another person I met in real life. Uh, Wendy F. Uh, we had dinner together, uh, not that long. It feels like it was not that long ago, but now I'm like, was that last fall or was it in the spring? But Wendy F, 496 Wendy, that's 495. Uh, oh no, but it's probably even sooner because I think I put a, anyway, thanks Wendy. E, Nancy and Gregory, thanks, thanks and good night. And Damon, Damon, D, Damon D on the backup uh, is number five hundred, so four ninety nine or four ninety eight or something. Damon D. I don't know why I call it like a Damon D. Damon, uh, how it became Damon D on the backup. Maybe it was from the party, but uh, interesting because. Uh, but it's also interesting that right towards f the end of four hundreds and the end of five hundreds are people I had met in real life too. So it's cool. And then Damon wrote a song for the podcast, so, uh, back, uh, in the day. So thanks, thanks, and good night, everybody. Sleep With Me wouldn't exist, uh, like, now. Like, you saw how many people, there's just a trickling of people that are still around. But it's the people that supported the show while they were listening or while they are in a position to do so or took another action. That's how we really exist. And I appreciate it being here. That's why we've done, we've done these thank yous at the end of every show. Because it reminds me, I record them before I record the show. So thanks and good night, everybody. All right, everybody. Scoots here talking you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus, uh, audio news. Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, like the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus. And I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about. And it's called Welcome to Scooterville. And he's real, people are really excited about this. Those are posty Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed. And they're really fun. They're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to them during the day. Some people fall asleep to them. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two part coverage uh, in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie contact, uh, first contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday, uh, oh wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast, sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. And, uh, yeah, that was all, everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus set. We got, um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This is for, uh, boar buds and boar besties. Uh, it was deep value. And, uh, uh I don't know what the <laughs> Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all intro episode come out February 8th, uh, and Big Farm in the Sky PI, all night episodes, uh, the six episodes, six or 13, that was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of Big Farm in the Sky PI. And then, yeah, this week, uh, another all intro episode will come out. Another all intro episode came out on, uh, February, January 26th or 28th. I can't read that. Okay, and then the story only feed and the ad free feed on Sleep With Me Plus. You know the the story only episodes and the um, ad free full episodes come out on the same day. So if you're a story only listener, you get those on the same day. Or if you're like let, you know making playlists. Um, so let's see. Those are two separate podcasts on Sleep With Me Plus. Um, 
but same content, uh, just, uh, the story only versions have no, well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no, uh, jingle music and no thank yous at the end and no intros, just the story only portion of the episode. Okay. So Sunday, 1239 dessert week. That was great. British bake off episode six. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, episode one. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, sorry, I went off topic there. February 7th was uh, Tapestry, which was for Va- v- Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was um, a TNG, re- like, a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, episode 5. That's season 10, collection 7. Uh, 1235, January 31st, uh, was uh, Notebooks of the Journey into the World of Friends. That was a series review. We'll kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was uh, Romancing the Stone, Tell the Tape, uh, in anticipation of Argyle, uh, which I still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was, uh, and then uh, January 24th was Dairy Week, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. And you can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything, the board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey into World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. Then a TV show recap, uh, Great, Great British Bake Off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week, great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from 2000, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident, totally by, like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of I'm trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen Bring It On even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes, uh, Bring It On, on mute, uh, and like kind of recorded, kind of like a TV recap episode. And um, those, uh, like with with some kind of, like, well, I rented the movie, so Two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality closed captioning, but then my uh, rental ran out when I like I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, twenty five minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best closed captioning. Even though it was mostly action based, it was like the championship. But yeah, I'd never seen. I still never saw. It. It's already been brought and. But, uh, well, I'll, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out, I don't know, right now it's in February. I don't know, those come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now as I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm uh, glad you're all here. And uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes um just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea still a sleepy voice but yeah if you ever want to check out a seven-day trial at sleep with me plus it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable so that you can you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it um and uh 
Yeah, you could do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, and then let me know what you think uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.